Hi babies. Um, so it's me, Julissa. Sorry, I got some crust on my eye. Makeup is like running real bad. Time to take it off. Anyway. Um, those of you who um you know oh so my, my other eye too gross. Um anyway, so um those of you who know me know that I like talk on real terms. Like for real, for real. Like real, 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 for real, for real, for real. And um it's just <clears throat> so tonight, um okay, before I talk, let me pray. Alright, here we go. Spirit of the living God, we just come to you with humble hearts and we thank you, Lord, for your love, mercy, grace, and kindness. Please forgive us of our transgressions, our iniquities, our sins, Father God. Please get, forgive us for being weak in our flesh. Father God, I pray that you usher in the Holy Spirit as I speak today, that I speak in love, Abba Father, um, that I speak in your love and your peace, uh, Father God, in sharing your truth, Father God, with um, those who have two ears to listen, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. I love you, God, and you are holy, and you are worthy, and you are righteous. And um, allow for this message to be received in love as well, Lord, and um, for your Holy Spirit to manifest. Use me, Father God, for your glory, and um, bless this message. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So, at Bible study, um, this, well, technically last night, there was, um, we were watching EX Ministries movie. And um, the topic, or the topic was, um, you know, basically identity crisis. I, I don't know if it was part two or three, I'm not really sure, but I know that it was identity crisis, that, that set. So if you want to check that out, I definitely highly recommend that you check that out because it's so worth watching. I mean, every, every DVD set is worth watching because it just, not only does it explain to you what the Word of God is, says you know and it's about but it also can it helps you relate it to current times um which you know sometimes you read the bible and you just don't know what it you know what it means and so you have to always um you know go to different versions of the bible or cross-reference it but uh g craig lewis explains things very very basic i mean if you don't get it you i mean just watch it over and over until you get it because it's just, you know, it's just that deep. And it really is deep. And you have to go in a mindset ready to receive um, a true word because some of the, like at first when I watched um, the very first one, I'm not, I think it was like one of the truth about hip hop or something. I was blown away. Um, I was just so blown away and I just couldn't even, I was like, wow, I used to listen to that. I used to do those things. I mean, you know, and it's like, for the longest time, I thought that all those things that I was doing before I had seen the video was right. And no one told me any different because they didn't even know. So no one knew. And then finally, we were exposed to the truth, you know. And that's one of the things I have always, always, always been seeking after. I mean, even long before I even came to Virginia, I was always talking about, I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. I want to know the truth. What is the truth? I want to know it. And that's exactly what I've always been seeking. What I realized is that the truth is in the Word of God. The, the word of God is truth and that I've been kind of dancing around it, you know, having, um, you know, different revelations about stuff, but never knowing where the revelation came from. So now I have the revelation and I also have where it came from, you know, the scripture that backs it. But um, this particular message, it was about basically speaking to the young men or speaking to the men about, you know, um, having their identity rooted in Christ because how are you going to know how to live, you know, be a man of God if you don't know Christ? And um, so it kind of, it you know, it I could tell it spoke to me as well because the other thing is that it said that the fathers, um, in the video, the fathers are where we get our identity from. So if you don't have a father in your life, then where are you going to get your identity from? And a lot of times, and this is where it comes in, where young women, you know, they go out to seek these men to validate their existence, in which everything that this video was talking about are things that I've been saying for the longest time. For example, I've been saying things like, um, the only man that can validate um, your existence is is God, you know, or is Jesus. Um, and... Uh, 
you know, I've been saying men need to be rooted in the word of God because we look, women look to them as the leaders, you know, and as, um, you know, as guides for us, um, you know, different things like that. And I've always, you know, not, pr I don't want to say preached about that, but I've always spoken about that. Um, and <clears throat> it just never, you know, no one ever took me seriously. And then finally I'm like, wow, am I, you know, am I just off the, you know, wrong my rocker? Am I just not saying the right things or whatever? But now I was saying the right things. I just was at the wrong time, you know? And now finally these videos are coming out or maybe they've been out for a while, but finally I'm being exposed to these videos and everything that I'm saying, it's being validated. It's like, wow, I, I said those things. I just didn't have, you know, the proper backing for it. But anyway, um, the, like I said, the one thing is that uh, your identity comes from your father, your earthly father. You know, so if your father is, you know, rooted in the word of God, then you'll know how to find a man that's rooted in the word of God. And this is kind of speaking to the women. One of the things that got me, though, is that those of us who are strong women, like I've met a lot of strong women because, because you know, I, I feel like I've met them, especially um, my God family. And see, I come from a background of strong women. I mean, I was, you know, I had my, like, for a little bit of my life before my mom passed, I had my stepdad. And um, I can only talk about myself, so this is why I'm sharing this with you. Um, I had my stepdad, he was in my life, and, you know, but there was always, there wasn't really a strong, you know, love, connect, like a connection, you know, there wasn't just really that father-daughter thing. I always felt like, you know, oh, I'm the, the extra because, you know, and when I found out that my biological father, you know, really was alive and existed, then I was really blown because I'm like, I thought my stepdad was my biological father the whole time. But anyway, um, so one of the things, like I said, is that when I posted, I, I had to say this because us women who are strong, we wouldn't have to be strong if the men in our lives would have just stepped into the plate and they committed themselves to the purpose that God created them for. Let me say that again. Us women who are strong, we wouldn't have to play the role of, of being strong and being aggressive if the men in our lives would have committed themselves to the purpose that God created them for. It blows me away when I meet a man who always is, is, you can instantly tell that a man is insecure and not, and does not have full confidence and trust in the Lord when he's always throwing out his money, boasting about what he has, cars, clothes, job, whatever. And that's why I tell men, and I, I tell anyone, don't root your identity. Don't have your identity being your job and your car and your friends and your relationship. Your only identity needs to be rooted in the word of God, needs to be rooted in Christ. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only foundation that's going to last past all of this stuff, all the material things and all of your friends when they change and they go about their separate ways. The only thing you're going to have is God. The only, the only man or person that's going to be in your life is Jesus Christ. And so my problem right now is that I'm very, the Lord has increased my spiritual strength, I guess you could say. God has filled me with his strength, and now I'm on fire. I'm a, quote unquote, as my godmother, you know, uh, had someone tell, uh, say to her that she was a firecracker for God, and I'm on fire for God, you know, and I'm, I'm fully committed, and I'm ready to go. I'm not perfect, but I'm fully committed and ready to go, ready to go to the next level in the Lord. So when I meet men, it's like, okay, you know, I understand what you bring into the table. Okay, you ha might have a job that's nice. You might have a car that's cool. You might have your own place that's nice. But I can get all those things too. I need a man who's going to lead me, lead me in the way of righteousness and holiness. I need to be with a man who's ruined the word of God because the man you're, the women are supposed to be submissive to their husbands. But how are you going to submit to a man who's weak, who's sitting in the corner crying about spilled milk, who's crying over a scratch on his knee? I mean, that's the problem. I wouldn't have to be strong 
And those men in my life were all were already confident and trusting in the Lord and already strong in the Lord. I wouldn't have to play the role of being aggressive. And that's another thing that I heard so much growing up. You're too aggressive. You're too aggressive. You're too aggressive. I have to be aggressive because I don't, there is no father and there is no man in my life that's supposed to be my husband who can protect me from the lecherous beasts, aka worldly men who want to uh, devour my virtue and, um, you know, keep me safe. The whole point of, the, of, of you, um, a man, is to uh, protect and provide and to, you know, be fruitful and multiply, you know, with your wife, you know what I'm saying? And um, it just baffles me. So when I hear people be like, oh, you're too aggressive, you're too aggressive, I'm like, yeah, I'm aggressive because I don't have a choice. Because the men in my life, they, they were weak. And, you know, Whatever the circumstance was, they just weren't strong enough. And I, what am I going to do? I didn't ask for the Lord to make me strong. I didn't ask for the Lord to, you know, give me increased strength or whatever. I just, I just wanted to be, you know, closer to God. And one of the gifts that I feel is a gift was the Lord blessed me with strength. And he blessed me with this strength because he knew that the men that were going to be in my life weren't going to be strong enough to protect me. I have to learn how to protect myself. If I'm not strong for myself, no one else is going to be. So when G. Craig Lewis was talking about that in the video, you know, saying how our identity is room for our fathers, I was like, yeah, you know, wow. Um, does It makes a lot of sense. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to put down those women who, um, you know, they may have been married, but then their husband got crazy because he went on an ego trip or whatever. And... Um, you know, they had to step out into the, had to step out into the world and play the mommy and daddy role because her husband went crazy. Or even those, you know, women who thought they were gonna be married to this dude and um, you know, he turned out to be a complete trip because he just had a moment of tantrum, whatever, you know, immaturity. That's another thing. I'm not gonna submit myself to any man who is is not on fire for God, not rooted for, not um, you know, rooted in the Word of God, and who's not mature enough in his spirit, a seasoned Christian. Like, why would you go through all that trouble? You know, like, why would you do that? So, I mean, it just makes sense to be, you know, to be in order. And you know, a lot of the stuff we're talking about is like, you know, man, you know, get your house in order, yada yada yada. Well, what do you do when you don't have a man in your household to have order with, you know? And um, it just, um, it just really just says something about it, you know. It just really says a lot about it. And uh, I just really, you know, pray on those things because it's serious, you know. Um, and also in the video, he said a lot of the problems were, you know, maybe a lot of the problems where women can't keep a man or hold a relationship or whatever is because they they don't have the relationship with their father that they need to have. And it's and it's true. You know, if you don't, I mean, I, I believe it's true. You know, if you don't have a relationship with your father, then you're not going to have an example of how, you know, what type of man, a man to look for. And most likely, um, it plays into each other that most women they date men or marry a man that is more like their father because it makes sense the father is the role model and you look up to your dad so yeah well what if you don't have that then you just have to you know it's it's it gets deeper and, it's, and it can be complicated but um i just wanted to, to put that out there because i just don't want to you know forget about those women who who are trying I mean we can't help that those men were weak and we and, and they didn't know they went crazy and lost their minds I mean what are we supposed to do stop our lives and just baby them and, and, and bottle feed them until they get right with the Lord again I mean let's get real you're a grown man and you're throwing a tantrum in the store you're a grown man but you're crying over spilled milk you're a grown man, but you say things like, I want my space back. Like, you're a grown man, but you're too immature to come and, and, and talk about a, uh, to talk about a situation and make it better and, you know, or whatever the case may be. You're too immature to just, just come out of your mouth and be like, well, just, let's talk, let's fix it, whatever. Like, really? Like, get real. And then you, most of the men who have that mentality, that immature mentality, you want a woman to submit to you? Why would any woman marry you or be with you to begin with when you act like that? When you carry yourself like that? I mean, 
and I hear a lot of times from men, and I, this is how I know that men are insecure and not feeling confident trust in the Lord, when they start saying things like, oh, you're too aggressive, oh, or you need to, you know, you need to um, do this or do that or change. Whenever a man tries to tell me I need to change myself, that's when I know that he's insecure with, with uh, his walk with Christ and he's not, you know, fully committed and he's not fully confident trusting in the Lord. Because if anything, you know, who God created me to be, I'm, I'm fine, you know? And if you're the only one, if he's the only one saying that and no one else is coming to me and talking to me about it, you know, it just, it's, it's, a, it's enough. It's enough. And that's what I'm finding myself right now. I'm in like this little phase where all the men I meet, they're just weak. I mean, other thing is like, it's not, you know, you read the Bible and you learn from it, but it's not just about, it's about spiritual warfare too. People keep, you know, I'm the life of me. Just people just like read the Bible and think that spiritual warfare is just not a part of it or something. It is. And it's very real. And so you don't want to be with a man who is not going to have your front and back when you're on the spiritual battlefield. I mean, really? You out there trying to fight these demons and stuff and trying to, you know, um, be obedient to what God told you to do and, you know, lay hands on people and you're getting attacked from all sides and your boo, your husband, your man stand over there, like shaking in his boots, about to pee on himself because he's scared. Like, really, dude? Get real. Like, you, you just can't be with that. So I thank God that he closed the door when I was about to get, be engaged. Not only, I mean, I thank God that he closed the door on all those relationships that were just not for me, that were just, you know, it just wouldn't have made sense because I can't lower my level to be to accommodate him because he feels insecure or inferior like dude you gotta come up to my level you actually my husband should be stronger than me spiritually I mean we either have to match or you gotta be stronger than me because I'm not lowering my my the strength for you I mean if the Lord personally comes to me and it's like Julissa lower that you know I'm good if the Lord personally comes to me and tells me so such and such and he lowers the strength and that's that's one thing but for a man to be like oh you're too aggressive you're blah blah, blah because you feel in insecure in yourself that you can't handle me that's not my problem you should go seek the Lord about that I'm, I'm sorry that you know you haven't figured out who you are yet and whatever but you need to go and seek the Lord about that. It's it's very sad. You know, some of these men are almost 30 years old and they still don't know who they are through Christ. You have got to know who you are through Christ. You can't you can't be a king, you know, where you can't be a joker wearing the crown of a king. And you can't be a king with the responsibility of a joker. The king is a is a man who knows who he is through Christ Jesus. And for you to, you know, for men to just be so nonchalant about not wanting to have responsibility and for not, oh, I don't want the responsibility. I don't want the pressure. You a man. You a man. God didn't make Eve first. He made Adam first. You are a man. You were built for pressure and responsibility. And it's sad. It's really sad. And, you know, there comes a point where you just don't have time for it anymore. You know, you can cry about it, you can pray about it, you can talk about it all day long. But at the end of the day, that guy has to make a choice whether he wants to be rooted in the word of God, whether he wants to be fully committed to learning more and growing closer in God. So that way he can finally, you know, accept. And, and the other thing is he has to finally accept that he's a king through Christ. He don't even know who he is. He walking around trying to be a, a, a fake thug, fake gangster, comedian, all these things. You don't even know who you are through Christ. Like, really, dude? Get real. So that's my prayer for all the men. All the men that, you know, that go to my church, all the men that are in tag team, that I'm in Souls for Real, that they finally realize who they are through Christ Jesus. Because that's the biggest, that's the foundation right there. Once they know who they are through Christ Jesus, they can start to build. And then God can start to reveal to them different things that, that they need to fix in their lives in order to, um, for God to send them their wife or, you know, vice, whatever the situation may be. But that right there is the foundation. And all the time, you know, I'm, I pray for everybody, but I never realized that's what I need to be praying for because a lot of these young men, they're lost. 
They don't know who they are. And yes, some of them might have fathers and some of them might not have fathers, but the point about it is, at the end of the day, who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? You're, you're a child of God. You are a son of the Most High King. You've got to start realizing that. You have to. You know, because, and just like young women, you know, I had to do it too. For those, you know, I had to start realizing, wow, I'm worth something. I don't need to be spit on. I don't need to be punched in the eye. I don't need to be, you know, um, aggressively handled. I don't need to be talked down to. I don't need to be kicked. I don't need to be, fit, you know, I don't need to go through mental drama and stress. I am the daughter of the most high king. That means I'm royalty. And once I learned that, that's when I started to carry myself better. I started to have self-respect. I started to dress, you know, dress uh, appropriately, classy. I started to think of myself as classy instead of just, oh, I'm just a girl and I'm wild. I can do whatever I want and I want to be sexy all the time. No, I, I started think, seeing myself in a different way. So when people are like, why do you dress up so much? It's, that's not even dressed up, sweetheart, first of all. It's just how I, I wear. I just... That's just what I do. I like wearing skirts, I like wearing nice tops, and I like looking nice because I'm representing who God has cleaned me up to be. I used to be a slave, now I am a queen through Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God. And for many of you young men out there, you're still slaves. You're slaves to your own mediocrity, slaves to your own flesh, slaves to your own fear about being a man in general. And what you really need to do is ask the Lord to cut out, cancel out, rebuke that fear in the name of Jesus Christ and ask the Lord to, to show you who you are in the Bible. Show you that you are a king through Christ. That you are a king through Christ. God gave us power to tread over serpents and scorpions and for many of us to not even acknowledge even that you know like god gave us power we are his children and i need for a lot of these young men to start realizing that so all of you can get your true christian wives and start your ministries and move on with life and have beautiful babies and do as the lord said be fruitful and multiply um Like I said, I just can't, you know, ruin my strength for anybody. You know, I, I just, I don't see myself being with a weak man. You know, I just, now that I know who I am through Christ, it's just not going to happen. The guy that I, I date, the guy that I choose to dedicate my time to or whatever the situation may be, he has got to know who he is through Christ and he has got to, to be, be on fire, be on fire. How does it look if I'm over there praising the Lord and the man that I'm with, he's sitting on his praise for God? It just, for me, it is disrespectful and it would bother me to no end. It's not like I need to go to church every Sunday and be screaming and hollering and running around the church. But no, I need for my husband to know that, um, you know, to be, know that I am a praiser. I love to praise God. And for him to be comfortable and acceptable with that, whether it be singing, dancing, clapping, whatever it is, I love to praise God. And um, any man that tells me, like, well, oh, you're singing too loud or whatever, no. You know, sweetheart. The other thing is about confrontation. A lot of young men, they just don't like confrontation. And the thing about that is, eventually, you're going to have to get to, to accept it. You're going to have to just ask the Lord to strengthen your spirit so that way you can finally be able to um, confront some of the issues face to face. How are you going to be the head of the household? How are you going to be the priest of your household? How are you going to be uh, a strong man of God if you can't even confront confrontation? They're going to be demons. They're going to be negative spirits and energies and, and people that come into your life daily, you know, as you get stronger and you walk with Christ. And if you're always running away, every time a little conflict comes up, that's going to set you real, that's going to set you back real far. And every time something happens, the devil is just going to keep on knocking you down, knocking you down, 
punch, punch, kick, kick, and you're just going to just fall every time. Every time. So, I, you know, men, it's time. It's time for you to stand up and be the leaders that, that um, God has called you to be. It, it's time for you to take your place. You know, we're in the end of end of end, end times. You know, any day Jesus Christ can come back. And if you're not in an order, if you're not aligned with, with the will of God, if you don't have your heart right and you're still holding grudges and, and, and being hateful and mean and, and um, you know, you don't have forgiveness in your heart, it's going to be a sad day for you. It really is. And um, we all have to seek our own soul salvation. We're all going to stand before the judgment. I'm just trying to relay this message because it was laid on my heart to share and well, laid on my spirit to share. But, um, and... I know that what I'm saying is the realest of the real, but some of y'all just ain't listening, and it's gonna be a sad day for you when you kind of find out that what you what you expected to hear, which is "Well done, my good my good and faithful servant," is "Depart from me, I never knew you." So we have to get in order. We have to get in line, and uh, I'm looking and praying. I'm praying for a lot of. Uh, these young men that go to my church now, that go to New Beginnings Christian Church, that go to a part of the Souls for Real Bible Study uh, Ministries and that part of Tag Team as well to get in order, get in line, and to just rise up to the, the leader that God has called them to be. Anyway, I love you. Be safe.